I've been meeting some new mediums. And as you know, in this channel, what we're endeavoring to do is trying to find out if we can explore how it is that mediumship, people getting readings from pe people who say that they can communicate with the dead, how is it that they can say or how they are convincing so many people that they're actually getting in communication with people that are dead, they're dead. And what are the tricks and the methods and the the wordplay and, and all the other things that go into it. We're really exploring that in this channel. And it's been really fun to have you guys along with me on this journey because every time I, <laughs> I turn over a rock, there's a new method or there's a new way of explaining it. Because I really do think that we as um, a community don't do a very good job explaining what does appear to be real in a lot of ways to some people who are convinced or motivated or have been raised with this expectation that mediumship or communication with the dead is possible okay so i'm going to i'm going to go right into the readings with this person and after we're all done i'll, I'll give you some background on who this person is um, but I will tell you, this is recorded in 2021. It was a mediumship summit. And there was a whole bunch of different mediums all done over Zoom. The first 15 minutes, they're explaining mediumship in their world. And then the next 45 minutes, I believe, is readings with people who were on the Zoom screen. Um, you know... Anybody who's following this channel knows that there are all kinds of ways of getting information about people. And it's always interesting when we're looking at a brand new medium, I know nothing about this person, to see how, what method, what general method are they using? Hot reading, cold reading, or whatnot. And um, I have to watch a lot of the readings. I have to listen to a whole bunch of different ones in there you know, as they go through, not just one reading, to kind of get an idea of what it is they're doing. So I have reviewed this woman's work <laughs> for, oh my gosh, for every minute of a reading that I'm listening to, it's four or five minutes for me to, to actually um, go back and forth because I'm going through it. I'm taking notes. I'm back up. I go forward, back forth you know, and so on, trying to get information and trying to understand how this method, uh, their method. So um, I'm not going to show you 45 minutes, trust me. Let's go through this. And I've been trying to wrap my mind around how to do this succinctly. Um, let's just do it and we'll talk as we go. And then maybe we'll be able to uh, sum it up at the end. So here we go. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how I work. So I'm going to open up. Spirit knows that I am ready to work uh, when I open up and push out my spirit. And if I, if you could take the information, I want a yes or a no. I don't want you to feed me information. Thank you very much. I like for the spirit to kind of come in and give you guys what they're giving. Make sense, guys? I, as a medium, am still human. Therefore, I don't want to misinterpret information. And I don't want you guys to give me too much information because you could be thinking it one way, but spirit could be wanting to say it another. One thing that I do understand and know with spirit is that they're going to come in and they're going to come in to meet your need. So there is 30, 34 of you guys on here now. Spirit decides how they're going to come in. I'm going to try to get to as many people as I can today. Um, and I'm going to let Spirit come in and decide who's going to come in, how they're going to come in. But guys, if you don't get a message from me today, I'm glad that you're here. There'll be more phenomenal mediums reading today. But know that whatever it is that comes through now while I'm reading is meeting everybody's need. Because the spirit world is very intelligent and they look at the need as a whole, as a group. All right, guys. So if you could take the information, I simply want you to come off of, uh, come on audio, give me your name and um, 
tell me that you could take it. If there's two people, no worries. Spirit will sort it out. All right. And we'll get down to that one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and begin right now. Okay. So those were her instructions. The first 15 minutes that I didn't show you were her talking about mediumship and Reiki and lots of stuff. It was, it was really hard to watch because honestly it didn't make a lot of sense. Okay. For the mediumship readings she's doing, remember this is part of a lot larger day. People are, there's 34 people and they are on the zoom screen that have bought into this mediumship summit. And her name is Lillian Suarez. As I said, I've never heard of her before. She has a teeny tiny following on social media. And so her way of doing things is she doesn't want anybody to say anything except yes or no. That's it. And her method, and like I said, all psychics have, the, have kind of a way they do these things, is for her, she says she's feeling um, somebody's trying to come through. So she throws it out there to the group of 34 people. And she starts out with these vague statements. And then as people who are listening, remember, these are people who are motivated sitters. They're, they paid their fee to be at this mediumship summit. They, most of them have been to multiple uh, psychics. This isn't like a thing. They just joined that one day. And if I'm not interesting enough, you can just watch my cat. <laughs> so these are people who who are used to getting readings. They want to get a reading. They've waited for this day. They, they're they sitting there watching other people get readings in the hopes that they're going to get a reading. They are motivated. So that's important to know. She says she only wants yes or no. That's all she wants. She said it twice that she really doesn't want you guys to give any information of the sitters. She throws out this information. Um, it starts out very, very, very vague. And then it moves into a little more specifics. And she thinks she's, she says, I'm getting really specific. You know, she, I'm going to try to get really specific, but it's just vagueness followed by more vagueness followed by more vagueness. She can see multiple people on the screen we can only see this in the speaker because this is recorded now so all we can see is just her and she has the chat and she's looking at a gallery with multiple faces 34 faces or 30 or whatever her screen will hold so when she throws some information out she can see people agreeing or going oh like that or some kind of motion that says oh that's me okay so she can also read the chat and so she can see if people are saying oh that's my brother whatever so there's a lot of information that we can't see because we're looking at a recorded uh video and so <laughs> out of the way i can't i can't see so <laughs> cats the internet was created for them, right? Okay. Yeah, he agrees. Okay, so here comes um, the beginning. She's going to start. Now, her method is, I'm trying to explain, it's hard for me to focus with the cat here, but if I if I knock him off of here and tell him to go away, no, he'll come right back and he'll complain the whole time. So it's better just let him be for the moment. Is that she'll throw the thing out, then she'll refine it. And as more and, and give a little more information in the hopes that somebody else will come onto the screen will come on and say that's mine that's mine i that's my person and she does this and oftentimes there's only 34 people in this room oftentimes two people will have conflicts and they'll say that's my person and that's my person no no that's my person no that's my person that's my person and my person so she refines it a little bit more with more vagueness until somebody says that's mine. I'll take it. And she'll just go, oh, yeah. Oh, it must be you. Okay. Based on whatever she's seeing happening in the screen and what's written on the chat or according to her, whatever she feels drawn to. 
sometimes there's probably four or five readings. Sometimes it's 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 hard to tell where one ends and when one doesn't, where they blend into each other. People, she says, keep coming through that are probably meant for somebody else. It's it's just like a hodgepodge. And and it's very convenient for her to not have to be specific because again, people are motivated to get this reading. They really want to have a connection. So they're more likely to jump on something that applies to a lot of people, but they want it to be them. Okay, so that's enough. Let me let me show you some more and then let's come back and we'll talk about it, okay? So the first thing I want to look at is her opening statements to people. What is her first, how does she open this up in the hopes that somebody is going to say that's me. So let's look at those things first, okay? All right, so here you go. So I know that I have a woman with me. I know that I wanna say she's a grandmother, but I, I feel like she's coming in with the love of a mother as if she would have raised you or, or the feeling that she was around. Um, I feel like she lives with you or she, lived near you and raised you with your mother there's there's a, an importance of talking about the name mary who can understand this mary grandmother mother mother the love of a mother even though she was a grandmother and there's a feeling that she raised you or she was very involved when you were growing up who can understand this i to talk about the name larry can someone understand larry a larry can someone understand the name larry because I feel like I have a Larry or I'm being brought, my awareness is coming to a Larry. No one? All right, okay, let me keep going and we'll figure out, we'll figure out this. Is, I wanna talk about Larry. Um, I wanna talk about a man that passed away from a heart attack because I feel like he's bringing me to the last moments of his life and I'm having a heart attack and I actually, fell over when this happened to me and it was very unexpected although I knew that I had um you know health issues before and I want to talk again I feel like either there's a, a Larry here with me as well or or there's a Larry connected with this man can someone understand a man that passed away of a heart attack unexpectedly was not at home when this happened and um I feel like he was a father Can someone understand that? Dad, heart attack. I'm also feeling like I wanna talk about the name Bob. All right, let's get more here. All right, let's get more here. So as I, I'm with him, I feel like I wanna say he was in the military because he's showing me a flag. And I know that that flag would still be with someone here on earth. I know that for a fact. I also would know that um, he. I feel like either he served four years or there's a significance of, of being proud of um, the time that he had in the military. Is there, would there be someone here that lost a father that, that passed of, let's say, heart issues? Heart issues, was in the military, wanna talk about the name Larry, and I wanna talk about the name Bob. It's a lot of information, guys. Okay, all right. I'm not gonna let him go because he's really putting effort to come in. Let's see, give me something that the person that you're here for can understand. All right, so I feel like I wanna talk to a, a woman that is on here. I feel like this would be connected to a female that is on here. I have a father, Bob. Uh, I have a father, Bob, died of a heart condition. Okay, Joy, thank you very much. Can you come on audio for me? Okay, so she finally got somebody. Remember, if, if you've watched some of my videos, you know what I'm always going to say is what is missing, right? So the first one, she did marry a grandmother who felt like she was raising you and she felt like a mother and that she was near to you. She lived with you. She lived near you. Okay. And then somebody named Larry. I mean, okay. First off, Mary. 
What's Mary's last name? You know, we could take care of this real quick if you start using last names and not just first names. So a Mary, a grandmother named Mary. My grandmother's name is Mary. I wonder how many other people out there listening to this right now have a grandmother's name Mary or somebody like that. And then she goes to Larry, which of course Larry is a not an uncommon name for um, people in the demographic of you know who would be in their 60s or 70s. There would be a Larry in the family somewhere, I'm sure. And then she goes to Bob. Robert, really? Really? I, and I don't think she was clearly saying that Bob was dead. A man who died of a heart attack. And it's a surprise. Uh, he wasn't at home. She feels like he was a father, which could mean father, grandfather, father-in-law, possibly an older sibling, a uh, older cousin, an uncle. I mean, think about how many other people that fits. Feels like a father. And I'm, sh I'm shocked, 34 people, and it takes this long to finally have somebody jump to it. Um, she feels he was in the military because he's showing her a flag. That fits a lot of ways. He's showing me a flag. Okay, well, maybe that doesn't mean military mean, means he put up a flag or something about a flag. Or he has his dad's flag or his uncle's flag. And that the flag would still be remaining with somebody here on Earth. So if you get one of those folded flags... You know, those triangular flags that from, that are folded perfectly in a, in a little triangle and they're put in a case and they're safe for people who have been in the military who, who have died. Um, those aren't thrown away. Uh, at the most, it might be given away to a consignment store or, or something like that. Those are collector items. So, yeah, I think it's probably still here on Earth. Even if it was buried with the person, it's still here on Earth. So it sounds specific, but when you think about it, it's really not that specific, right? Okay, let's see. Number one cause of, of death, heart disease. Ta -da! So she goes right to heart disease, heart death, uh, heart attack, sudden heart attack. And something to do with four. Four years. And then she goes down and says, or, or had a lot of, and he, he really appreciated his life in the military. I mean, he had a lot of, um, what is it she said? He had a lot of, um, well, you guys can, you know, you probably just listened to it. I've seen, I've heard this video so many times that, I'm getting all mixed together, what it was. But anyway, it took a long time for somebody to come forward. Let's see what else she's got. All right. Let's see what we have. Okay, so now I feel like I want to say that there's uh, that there's a woman coming in here. She passed of cancer. This woman struggled the last six months of her life greatly. Um, swelling in the legs, uh, difficulty walking, because I don't feel like as if cancer was the only thing this woman suffered or experienced. There would have been um, other things going on with her and almost want to say maybe circulation or diabetes here because my legs are hurting and they're swollen and I'm having difficulty. And then on top of that, I, I um, get cancer and, and, you know, from there, things kind of declined very quickly for me. feel like this is like an aunt on mom's side. But if the relationship is wrong and you can take the information, I'm okay with that. Mm. But again, cancer, but had difficulty walking, a lot of difficulty with circulation in the legs. Um, can anyone understand this? And again, I want to be on mom's side here. And it, so this is maternal aunt. Um, Six months is very important for me to mention because there would have been a time that things got really bad for her and her health. And also want to talk about November being important. I want to talk about November. So it could be birthday, anniversary, passing date, or date of significance, but I want to talk about November. November. So I, 
Okay, so where are we at now? She's got a woman who has passed away from cancer, second known cause of death in uh, people. If you've made it to adulthood, heart disease, cancer. But it might not have been cancer. It might have, she had a lot of health problems, but she had also diabetes and swollen legs. Well, a person who has died, I'm, swollen legs and having trouble walking, has diabetes. This is a person who's going to die and the last six months have been really bad for her. Oh my gosh. And this thing, and, and Lillian Schwartz, which she does a lot of, I think there's four instances in this, in this time she's throwing out a month. She doesn't give you a day. She doesn't give you a year. She doesn't explain to you what it is about November or February. She does February and November a lot. All she's saying is, is, November mean anything to you? And then she has this little thing she says, and you heard her say it, a birthday, a passing day, in other words, the day somebody died, an anniversary, or a date of significance that happened in a month of November. And there were people on this call who could not make a connection to a month. Amazing. 34 people couldn't. Well, they, they didn't have a woman who died of cancer, as well, or at least that they're coming forward to. All right, let's see what else she has. What else you got there, Lillian? And, all right, okay, let's keep going. Let's see who else we have. Can anybody understand the name Susan? I want to talk about the name Susan. Oh, we have a Susan here. Hi, Susan. Hi. <laughs> how are you Susan so you know I gotta say I gotta come direct to you Susan would you understand the month of February as being important yes ah uh, yay that's called direct good job spirit because they said just go to Susan all right so let's see who we have here Susan you would understand Woo! you have a gang of people here we have you understand mom is past dad is past yes you would understand aunt is past aunt on mom's side is past yes you would also understand that there's an uncle on that side that is passed. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, but I also want to say they're all here with me, but there is a younger soul. I not younger, younger, but there's a young man. So she says she's looking at the chat. She's looking at the screen with people's faces and names on it. Names on the screen. And she says, Can anybody um, relate to, or can anyone understand the name Susan? And immediately a woman comes on the screen named Susan. And she's like, wow, there's a Susan here. <laughs> and then she says, can you relate to something? What can you understand why the month of February is important? And the woman says, yes. And Lillian Schwartz here, Schwartz jumps up. Yes, that's what I call direct. Good job, spirit. What about, what about February? It never gets answered, trust me. And... I went, I went a little longer on this one than I would have um, before because I think this is so interesting. She's looking at the person on the screen who looks like she's in her 70s-ish, maybe a little older. And she says, there's a gang of people here for you. And the lady's like, yes. And she says, your mother and father have died. What are the odds of that? A mother and father have died the woman is in her 70s and at least 70s and her mother and father have died. And then she goes on to name three more people that have died. All of them are siblings of her parents. I 
odds pretty darn good, right? And then she brings in a younger spirit. But she's not exactly sure. She doesn't qualify that. You know, it could be a younger spirit. What does that mean? Somebody in her life, somebody in the 70-year-old woman's life has died who's younger than 70. And it's a man. Could it be a baby? Could it be um, a child? Could it be um, a, a sibling? Could it be somebody she knew? Could it be, again, there's no name given. There's nothing specific. It's just, there's a younger spirit, a younger man who's coming forward. Boy, this is accurate. Not. All right, let's keep going. So, man, I, I got to say, guys, I keep getting the name Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. But no one, he, he doesn't want to say anything but Larry. But I'm like, okay, but give me more. But no, it's, it's Larry. It's me, Larry. It's me, Larry. All right. Um, I feel like he's coming with that information, but not giving me so much more information. Um, all right, so... Else. Larry, give me something else. Look, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to you. Can someone understand the month of November? Could it be Jerry? Okay, all right. Let's see. If if he's with you, he's gonna give you more information immediately. Would you understand that this this uh, gentleman left a car that he loved behind, a car that he really, really, really loved? That's the next piece of information that I'm coming to, the image of a car that I would have left behind that I really, really, really loved, that I was very connected to. No, okay, all right. I'm gonna let, let that go, Tracy, and I'm gonna ask him to give me something stronger, okay? Because I, I don't wanna push it or force it, all right? But we're gonna put that out there. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, can someone understand the month of November as being important for a father? Uh, okay, just that I'm coming in with too much mixed evidence. Okay, I feel like I have a father with me. And I feel like November would be important or associated with him. And I feel like I want to say maybe a, a, ch a child's birthday, one of his children's birthday, or um, it would be an important date because I want to talk about November. As I have him with me, what I see with him is that he had tons of tools, snap-on tools, all in his garage. And um, th those tools would have been handed down to someone still. And he's talking about his hammer being a handyman. Can someone understand a father handyman? Tools that he would have had um, if they weren't snap on just a lot of tools. Oh, Susan, Susan, you can take that. Okay, so we're back with um, this general kind of statements, November again. Um, the November is, could be a uh, birthday of this man's child, somebody's child, and how that relates to it, I don't know. Um, that never is made clear. And he has a lot of tools. Oh, and he left a car that was very important to him. Well, this is like the flag again, right? What would, when you die, you, you've heard that phrase, you can't take it with you. So what, if he had a car that was very important to him. Now, a car that is important to you could be a car that is important to you. It could be your first car. It could be a car you had, you know, that you that you really, really loved and you worked really hard to uh, pay it off and it meant a lot to you. Or it could be a car that, um, a classic car or a car that you love driving. I mean, it could be anything. A car that you left behind. Guys, this is so vague. And this guy, again, unnamed man, had a bunch of tools. And they got passed down to somebody. Again, this is 
it's so vague. It's so vague to be absolutely not anything. Okay, so let's go to something else. Uh, she does a lot of this month of, she, she mentions it like four or five times, different times. It's either February, it's November, February, November, February, November. And it could have anything to do with a birthday, a passing day, a significant day, um, an anniversary. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing I want to put up here that she does a lot of, and I'm going to give you some examples is she makes a statement, sort of seems vague, sort of seems specific. She makes a statement that sort of seems specific. And when the person responds, they're giving her a lot more than yes or no. She's relying heavily on that. At no point during the rest of this, all of her readings, does she say, no, I said yes or no only. She allows them to just go on and give them information. And they do. Every single one of these women does that. Every single time she calls on them, she, they go in and they give her more information. The other thing I want to point out is that whenever she says something that it seems specific and they respond, and even if it's wrong, then she backtracks and says, oh, that's what I'm getting. That's. Oh, that makes sense. That's what they're telling me. And these are all very common mediumship responses. So let's do some examples of that because I think they're interesting to be able to see. And when you were little, would you understand that you gave her, um, you would uh, paint pictures and give it to her? Pictures or also little, um, little animals I would paint. I would paint <laughs> little, like little toys. I paint on them and like give them to people. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute because she's acknowledging that about you, right? And she's saying, I love watching her. So I would know that you would do that when you guys were together or around her. Mm -hmm. um, and she, when she passed, she passed of illness. You understand? Long ago, you came across this picture. He wants to talk about pictures and picture. Oh, yes. A picture of him when he was little. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's acknowledging that, right? And he's saying, you know, when you when you come across my things or you're talking about me and you're saying stories, know that my spirit is with you. My spirit is with your spirit, okay? Um, and so, so someone just passed, you said? Someone just passed? Okay. So when you come across a picture of somebody, that's me with you. And you notice she said, he wants to talk about a picture that you came across. And the sitter, who's very motivated, said, yes, I came across a picture of him when he was little. And she validates it immediately. Yes, because of course. And what child doesn't draw photos or draw photos? And what child doesn't draw pictures for for family members like a grandmother or a mother or whatever? And so Lillian says, "There's. Do you remember that you drew photos? Uh, you drew pictures for her." And she's like, "Yes." And then of course she interjects with more information than she was told to, than is yes or no. And she says, "Yes, I drew little." little pictures of um animals and things and gave them to her and then immediately she says yes he's acknowledging that just exactly with the photo what about the photo yes yes he's acknowledging that he's acknowledging that photo little knickknacks that she kept for a long time so if you gave her something she would pull it out and you're like oh my god you still have that absolutely absolutely you yes <laughs> and christmas time was her favorite time but she liked Easter too, because I know she's pulling out a box on Easter here. You understand all, that? All the holidays, yes, yes. She oh. <laughs> buy the one she loved the most to the one <laughs> to her yeah. lately, his favorite. But I know I want to talk about Christmas. I know I want to talk about Easter. I know I want to talk about like her baking the little lamb cake. So her favorite is Christmas, 
and the and the sitter's going yeah and then she says and she also loved easter and she's like yeah and she goes and then the sitter says she loved all the holidays In other words, everything would have been a hit. She could have said St. Patrick's Day. She could have said Halloween. She could have said uh, Dia de los Muertos. She could have said anything. And the woman would have said, all the holidays. Yeah, she loves them all. So that's a motivated uh, sitter. They're so motivated to, to make the connection. They're willing to agree to anything that is said. Okay, what is that? What are you giving? What are you showing me? And she's like, mm -hmm. and she loved them. And, she, and I tell you, does she have issues with her sugar, with sugar? Her husband did. She, she had the cat. Yeah. Passed. I'm sorry. Her husband passed as well. Yes. Yeah. I keep getting, you know, the feeling of diabetes. Diabetes. So uh, obviously, it can be that they're, you know, he's beside her because I know I want to talk about sugar. I know I want to talk about that. You know, I know she loves sweets though. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. So she says um, about does she have a problem with sugar and the motivated sitter says her husband did in other words she didn't you're wrong but her husband did she's making an excuse and she's she's going to throw her a bone and say yeah but her husband did and then um schwartz says schwartz yes she says um well because she she brings it back yeah that's kind of like what i'm hearing and something about diabetes well if her husband has problems with sugar then that kind of means that somebody has diabetes and so that comes back to that where um the sitter has given more information than yes or no has giving out this information and now the medium is just using that information she just got to make it sound like she has something accurate and the medium again throws out something, says, "Has he is he still alive?" And he's not. So that was wrong. I think she would know if the person was there or not, considering she's supposed to be in touch with this woman. And then when the woman says, "No, he's dead," also, then she's like immediately, "Oh yeah, well he's here with you. He's where he's here with her." So that makes sense. In other words. I got that wrong, but I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that I knew that all along by, by connecting it back to being right. And maybe you'll forget that I actually asked a question that was incorrect. That kind of thing. Who likes Elvis? Jeez, my husband. <laughs> yes. Cause he's, you know, I don't know a lot of Elvis songs, but I think he's handsome. And I just see him doing that. <laughs> On the little dance and the little kick, you know. So it, he wants to bring the joy. Your husband is living still. No, your husband is passed. That's what it is. They're together because your son said I'm with him. So I said, wait, is he living or is he passed? So husband is coming in here as well for you. Okay. Oh my God, does he love you? And you still wear your wedding ring? Yep. Yes, because he is so I'm proud of that. My wife wears her wedding ring. Yes, it's still my. Okay, so let's let's unpack that just a little bit more. Oh my gosh, there's so many examples, you guys. So she throws out that who likes Elvis? Okay, of the generation that this woman is, Elvis would have been a major star. He would have been a major figure um, in that time. I think Elvis was around, really popular for 20 years or so. So who likes Elvis is probably something that seems like it might be specific, but it's actually very, very vague. And uh, she makes this huge mistake. Your husband's still alive? And the woman's like, no. And so she tries to correct by saying, oh, well, your son's here. Well, she'd already determined her son was here. And she says, well, he's saying that he's here with his dad. You know, oh, they're here together. Isn't that great? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and then she says, do you have, uh, do you still wear your wedding ring? And she's like, yes. Now that does seem like a hit, but most women of her age are still going to wear their wedding ring. Okay. She's in her seventies. Of course, she's still wearing her wedding ring. And it helps a lot because every time she lifts her hand up, 
Every time she lifts her hand up, you can see the ring. It's on her hand. <laughs> That's right there. And remember, we can't see every instance of these people on the screen. They can. We can only see what's being um, with the speaker, the person who comes forward. So number one, it's easy, even if it was a just a, a recording over a phone and she couldn't see the woman, the likelihood of a 70 year old woman who's still grieving her husband and that she would still be wearing her wedding ring is extremely high. And then when you can see the ring, it makes it so much easier, right? When you see flowers, random flowers, this is what your son is showing me. Like if you're walking and there's just one flower that bloomed in certain areas, that's him letting you know, mom, I'm here. I'm here. You understand? Yeah. And are you sister? <sighs> your well, sister? Like, like a sister. Like a sister. Okay, thank you. Because he's saying, well, I want to acknowledge her too. So um, if you're walking and you see a flower that is blooming and it is just a random flower that is blooming, it's the only one blooming out of all these other flowers and it's the first flower to bloom or the last flower to bloom, that's her son sending you a message. And then she says to this, this woman who's sitting on the couch with her, and she's been tearing up and dabbing her eyes at times, too. And she says, is that your sister? She's, and she says, she's like a sister. She's much younger than the other woman, so I don't know why she would have thought it was a sister. It looks more like a daughter. But she says, is that a sister? And she's like, no, we're like sisters. And she's, And then she goes back to... Oh, well, your son would like to acknowledge her being there and that she's been such a big help and on and on. Again, no names. Did the son know that woman on the couch? How long has the son been dead? There's nothing. There's 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 no information there at all. There's it's zip zippo information. What is the deal with his hammer? Would he put his initials on the bottom of the hammer? Yes, he always put his name on his tools. Because uh, he's like carving his initial and he's really taking his time and then going on to the next one and carving his initial and going on to the next one, you understand? Um, okay, so she says, did he put his initials, carve his initials at the bottom of the hammer and the handle? And and Susan says, he put his names on name on all the tools. Well, that was very common. Very common. My father had a full workshop. We know lots of people who had workshops and had tools, especially if you're working with in a as a career where you were taking your tools with you to go do something at somebody's house or, or at a business or some kind of uh, job. You put your name on the tools. So it is really um, likely that a man in that generation would have his name or his initials on tools. I'm not giving her that. That's another one of those things that seems very specific, but is actually very, very vague and very common. Okay, so this next person, she's reading for somebody named Susan, and she's still talking about the tools, and she's going to make a mistake, and it's going to be wrong. So what she's going to do is deflect and say, oh, I think I'm getting it for somebody else is mixed in here. So watch this. Very interesting. Um, and because that, but that's how much he had passion for what he did, you know? So would you understand he used his tools with his career path and what he did for his career path? Yes. Yeah. Because I don't only want to say that I'm using these tools and, and I know that I want to say that, there's a um i feel like that he um is telling me that his son like took on that as well did what he did you know learned what he did like he would like to teach not so much okay, okay. thank you thank you no problem so but i know then this is just for cindy so i still feel like i have cindy's person to the side a little here cindy i i 
I feel like that might be correct for you. Like dad would have taught brothers to do things with those tools and kind of teach them. So that was a mess and a big one. She, he was, she was just assuming that the man who had a lot of tools would have um, taught his sons that there would be sons and that he would have taught them how to work with the tools and so on. And whenever Susan says, no, that's not true. She says, oh, well, I must be mixing this up with somebody else who's also here. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So as you go through these, you're going to get a sense of, of uh, where I'm coming from. I hope you're picking up on how vague all this really is. Um, there are so many in this in this 30 minutes, 40 minutes of, of recordings that of this these readings, I, I'm not even sure. I should have probably just played it all the way through instead of skipping and moving back and forth. But I was trying to show you specific examples of how she takes credit for things, even when she gets something wrong, how um, she throws out the most vaguest terms in the hopes that it'll hit. And of course it's going to hit because it's so vague. And these people are motivated to 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 believe that it's real. So they want it to be real. So that they're going to seize on anything. Now I'm going to show you one more example here. I feel like he definitely wants to acknowledge that he was here, that it was, that he wasn't absent. And um, would you understand that he wore hats? <laughs> he did wear a lot of hats. I even I, still have one of his hats here. <laughs> give me another piece of evidence for her. Come on, one more. And he says he wore hats, but also wants to acknowledge the hat that someone has of his. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have it here. Beautiful, fantastic, and wonderful. Listen, he showed up. Did you catch that? So he wore a hat. Her father wore a hat. He had hats. He liked hats. And then the sitter says, yeah, and I still have one of his hats here. And then the medium says, well, somebody has one of his hats and she's like, yeah, I have one of his hats. I mean, it wasn't even 10 seconds that passed before. She just repeated what the media, but the sitter had just told her. Okay. There's just too much I could show you with this woman. Um, Let's sum up. This is cold reading. Um, she says she's been instructed and, and she's a teacher. Or she says she teaches mediumship. She's also a Reiki healer. Anybody who says they're a healer and then they still wear glasses makes you really question, are they really healing anything? Um, that always makes me really worried. And it just, it, it it's red flags when anybody says the word healer. Okay, so that's beside the fact. We're talking about mediumship here right now. But, you know, she is wearing glasses. So let's just point that out. Um, and so her thing is to throw out some of the most generic phrases ever. Bob, Mary. Uh, later on, she does a Marie. Anybody know Marie? And, and the woman says, Muriel? And she goes, is that your mom? She said, like, yeah, that's my mom. So that's probably the best hit she had is that whenever the woman said Muriel, she, she said, is that your mom? And she said, yeah, that's my mom. That was probably the best hit. And it's not even really a hit. She threw out the name Marie. And we had been talking about her mom and, and so on anyway. So um, at, at times when I'm watching this, I think that a lot of the sitters themselves were really smelling the, you know, the BS. Um, they were kind of like, oh, I'm not so sure. One said, well, he had nine brothers, so it could have been somebody else that was in the military, that he was talking about in the military, but he wasn't in the military. Another one said, um, when it was something about a birthday, a birthday that just passed, she's like, a birthday that just passed. Well, we have a really large family, so it's very likely there would be a birthday that has just passed. And um, that same woman, she said something about again. She brings up the she brings up a holiday or the month of November, month of February. That's what it was. She brings up February again, and she goes, 
well, no, not really. So besides the fact there's tons of misses in this, anytime that it remotely felt like it could be applied, like she said in this one where she said that was evidence of, uh, of whatever she just said, which was not evidence of anything. She, she, she throws out these vague hits, claims them as if they were real. The people over and over and over again, give her far more information than just yes or no answers. Um, lots of mediums do that. They say, just tell me, just tell me yes or no. Don't give me any more information. Remember, they can see the person on the screen. They can see their surroundings. They can make assumptions. They can see the human being. They know how old they are. They can hear if they have an accent, which makes helps you make assumptions about what their demographics are. Um, what would be names that would be common of this person for family members, you know, siblings, children, parents? What would be names that would be common? Martha, Mary, um, and so on. She never throws out anything like. I'm getting a Luigi or a um, Lars or <laughs> Jose or anything that could be ethnically different than whatever their accent is. Um, it, no, never anything like that. It's always names that are common for the era that these people, these women, yeah, let's say it, they're all women, are, are in. Um, so... This Lillian Schwartz, I am so unimpressed with her. Um, I, I know she could care less, but I'd never heard of her before. I'm looking at her social media. It's, you know, really low um, as far as, uh, you know, a thousand uh, followers, 2000 followers. I can't even remember at this time. Uh, just really, really low. For somebody who can who is supposed to be communicating with dead people, which if you could do that, you would be the most powerful person on this planet, right? Um, she's she's not not anywhere. I'm uh, if people thought that those were good readings, I'm really sorry. Those were vague, cold readings. And when people say that they think they got a really specific reading, it's probably because they're very emotional and they're very motivated to make sure it was a good reading. Plus, um, they tell they they aren't really listening to it again. They're they're not keeping track. You know, they're not writing it down. Um, it feels like it was a good reading. It's they they want it to be good. If somebody has a really good reading from this woman. Please send it on to me. I'm happy to look at it. If she is the real deal, I like that they always say the real deal, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to see it because everything I've seen in this hour that this woman was on the screen in front of me, and I've gone through this back and forth multiple times, um, all her readings, and she's saying that it was great. She says all these readings are accurate. She's saying she's getting evidence. And I think only like one person really did kind of tear up. Everybody else was kind of like, ah, thanks. Have a nice day. You know, that you felt like they wanted to just get off the call. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, they're very polite. The women were all polite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, you have a good day too. Kind of thing. Anyway, if you like this long form a video. I'm doing short, short, and I'm doing long and medium, and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. So if you like this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. If you saw things in here that you want to talk about, or you have uh, comments or questions, please leave it in the comments. I love getting comments from you all. Um, like and subscribe and share and leave comments this video if you can. I really would appreciate it. As I said, I cut out a lot because she went and read for about 40 minutes. And I always say that if there's anything really, really good, it's going to be in the in there. And 
it was all more of the same just weak weak tea very weak tea but you could see the pattern and i think that was what it was i was trying to show you the pattern of this person and how she does mediumship and it was it became formulaic after a while when i'm watching her it's like okay then she throws out something extremely vague and then she kind of goes back and forth between people who as she gets a little less vague she says statements that seem to be very specific even though they're not they're very vague and then whenever she makes a statement and it misses um she goes back on it and says yeah that makes sense because that's what i'm getting and, and several times she'll be like woo woo i got it right woo go spirit yeah and then she throws out common words common phrases you know a flower if you ever see a flower that's just blooming on its own that means her son is trying to send her messages she got so much wrong with people who were living or not living and zero names nothing specific even though she is called an evidential medium this isn't evidential of anything except she's not even a good cold reader i've seen much better cold reading all right thank you guys appreciate you hanging out with me this long